Welcome back to the show. Now, Laura Dern is an Oscar-nominated actress. Could she be getting another nod for her latest film? Well, it is getting some great buzz. Tim Ferguson sat down with her to talk about her latest movie, 99 Homes. And it's actually getting better uh, reviews than it's we had, had good expected. Reviews. It really has. But yeah. before we talk about Laura Dern, you have some cookies in your hand. Yeah, <laughs> as you know, guys, I just got back from London for the Steve yeah. Jobs movie, and Chris Bloke, our uh, <laughs> Chris Moore Bloke, our director is a big fan of Jabba cookies, and that's the only place you can buy them. So I brought several back uh, from London for him and for you guys. Oh, you know. thank you. I, I love that. I love that you thought Bloke was his last name for a second. <laughs> I know, because we, we, we all call, call him, him the Bloke. Because yeah, he's from yeah. England. But so. we'll be doing Steve Jobs in two weeks. when it, We get all the whole cast. But, but anyhow, the cookies now. <laughs> today, you, you, Laura, come in here. You get two Oscar nominations for right. Laura Dern. Laura. Laura Shear? <laughs> I was like, whoa, Where's wait a minute, yeah. But you know, she's a character actress that yeah. everybody recognizes. Uh, uh, an Oscar nomination for Rambling Rose and of course The Wild just recently and she's so wonderful to talk about. And I'm going to tell you a quick story, how she became an actress. Her dad, Bruce, used to do westerns at Old Tucson. Yeah. And she'd hang around as a little girl. I remember seeing her. And she said it was in Tucson at Old Tucson that I decided I'm going to grow up and become an actress. Wow. That's the kind of story people enjoy hearing. I yeah, think. that's so uh, neat. And she's wonderful in 99 Homes. And Tina, you hit the nail on the head. It is a surprisingly good film. Here's my chat with Laura Dern. Oh, actually. Homes. For actresses and families like the Derns and your dad, is, did you get attached to a home, or like many actors, were nomads where we don't get involved, we don't get emotional about a home? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think we're always emotional about having a sense of home and a mm -hmm. place to land. And I think that, um, you know, we've been lucky to have mostly a luxurious life, so I'd never compare my own with anybody walking through yeah. what, since 2008 particularly, uh, the bank crisis and even the bailout um, did to so many American families. But with that said, I think artists only relate to the fact that there are good times and hard times. And yeah. um, so there's some up and down of how you live uh, being the child of actors for sure. I, I think your character, Lynn, also disagreed with that, that her home was, that's where she wanted to be. Particularly because the backstory, as we get a sense of based on our age difference, et cetera, is that I clearly was a, a teenage girl who got pregnant, maybe had a baby at 15 years old. And her community, her church, her country, her friends said, do the noble thing, have your child, and we'll always be there to support you. Yeah. And so for her, on her own, raising a kid, you know, going to beauty school instead of having an opportunity to go to college because of her kid, something that has happened to a lot of women in this country. She built a home for her son. She built a business she could have within that home. And it's a sense of pride and proving to herself and her child that she could make it despite this teen pregnancy and that everyone would be there to always help right. her provide for her kid and the country doesn't work like that. And she senses her son played by Andrew Garfield, uh, she starts to sense that he made a deal with the devil. Yeah. And that doesn't sit well with her. No, it does not. <laughs> and you as an actress, when he buys this luxurious home for the family, when you walked in, what a great job you did because you could tell, you. I don't want to be here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really, um, it's amazing how the the film strips away this other sense of what home means. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the core of not only keeping the family together, not only just wanting to have home as memory and security and something that means something to you, that it's a personal value, not something to show to the world um, in terms of consumerism, but that home is holding your sense of morality your sense of empathy. And when she sees him losing that, she knows he could be lost forever. Wow. Yeah, Laura Dern, you know, she could possibly get a nomination for Supporting Actress again. Uh, she's so good in this. Uh, okay. She's just hot right now. Yeah, she is. She's getting a lot of work.
and I'm happy for it. Friday, uh, DVD Blu-ray just out this week. Mad Max, Fury Road, and we have Charlize, the beautiful Charlize Theron, oh, will be here with Charlize. us. Oh, I love it. On Friday, and that movie did very well, surprisingly, because they weren't expecting it to do as well as it really did. Uh, and uh, of course, I reviewed it. I gave it a B minus when it came out, and uh, I recommend it. Uh, it's a uh, it's a good one. Well, awesome. No, I'm sorry. I gave 99 Homes a B minus. I gave Mad Max Fury Road an A. Woo! I was gonna say, yeah. I, like, I like Mad I Max. That, That's yeah. a good one. Maybe so I know a lot of people are excited for that DVD exactly. release. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that interview again this Friday, Jim. Thank you so much. Right, I'm off to Miami in the morning. Woo! Hey, safe flight. Bring uh -huh. us back some more cookies. <laughs>